Hello fellow collectors, thank you for clicking on the video. Um, so I've titled this Boutiques, Scalpers and Limited Editions and it's kind of my thoughts and a discussion and a bit of a rant as well from my own journey. just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about my experience in collecting boutique Blu-rays in particular and just the state of our hobby and the industry at large. Also, as sort of a parenthesis, why I think Criterion are the gold standard of the boutique distributors and why, in my opinion, other companies should follow their lead in how they release films. So, to jump right in, why do I think Criterion are the best? Well, the biggest reason for me is that whether you pre-order one of their releases or you buy it on day one, day 100, day 1000, you get the exact same thing. The exact same packaging, the same contents and the same great experience. Do you want the Bergman box set? The Before Trilogy box set? Do you want to pick up the Doctor Strange Love Digipack? Have you been a collector for the last week or the last 10 years? Well, it doesn't matter because as long as they stay in print, you can purchase them and enjoy them in all their glory. That for me is what a top tier boutique company should do. I often find myself frustrated by the infiltration of limited editions into the boutique space. Now, of course, you can get companies that specialise in uh, limited editions in particular, but my and my issue isn't so much with them, but more with other distributors weaving so many limited edition releases into their main catalogue. Now, I understand limited editions have existed for a long time, especially in more mainstream movie collecting space, and of course, I myself, like most of us, own more than a few of them. For boutique companies in particular, though, I fail to understand them. Companies like Arrow, or Indicator in particular, in my opinion, damage their brand by this baffling over-reliance on these limited editions. And Eureka 2 have also started to go down this route, but in my opinion, in a much, much less drastic way. So what's my problem with them? Well, it's the very nature of the limit on a number available, and a question that has arisen during my collection, why are these limited? Why aren't they standard edition releases? By all means, if a company wants to release something special for a trilogy of films or a particularly important release or a director's work, then I love to see such things get a special treatment and release. And if companies can profit, which of course they do, from these limited edition releases by selling them at sometimes incredibly reasonable prices, then why does there need to be a standard edition, in quotes, or a reissue of an edition that's far cheaper quality? I'm someone that has only got into boutique Blu-ray collecting over about the last two years, and that was with a fairly slow start. I got myself going with a couple Criterion releases and a few Eureka releases, and I thoroughly enjoyed them. The films were great, the supplemental materials were fantastic. I loved the packaging, the artwork, the booklets inside, and it didn't take me very long before I wanted to pick up more. I started seeing that other companies existed too and wanted to pick up more titles and see what other distributors had to offer as well. My first indicator release was Force 10 from Navarro and the special limited edition. This was something of a family film growing up and I absolutely love it. It was a no-brainer for me to get and what I felt would be a good introduction to indicator. Which was, as I discovered, a much loved and admired company in the boutique space. When I got this release I could see why. A great hard slip box with great artwork, reversible artwork inside on the Scanavo case, a great booklet, great restoration of the film, just a stunning release. And so later on that year when they had a sale, I was really excited to dive in, I'll pick up more releases from them. Of course by that point I'd seen lots of people's indicated collections, great looking Scanavo cases with booklets, really similar to Criterion in that way, though Indicator do a lot more, book, uh, a lot more box sets. I picked up my first few titles and then eagerly awaited their arrival. I received the titles a few days later and saw that they were just in standard Amore cases, some were even blue, not even clear. There was no reversible artwork like on Force 10, but just marketing material on the other side of the insert, and no booklet anywhere in sight. To say I was disappointed is a huge understatement. What happened to the quality that I was expecting and had been told about? I don't think I'd ever even seen an indicator collection video with a standard Amore case, so what was this all about? See, it was only after looking specifically into it that I discovered that editions that I thought were standard are in fact LE limited editions. So Indicator have these limited edition box sets, they have these limited edition releases like Force 10 with a sturdy cardboard slip box, and then they have further limited editions which are the ones that come in the Scanavo case and have a booklet. And then finally they have the standard editions which are bare bones releases from them. How as a new collector was I supposed to know about that? 
And more importantly, why? Why so many limited editions of everything? It really felt like as a collector I'd been shortchanged, especially because having owned already a couple Criterion releases, they come in the Scanavo case, they come with the booklet, it just seemed like a no-brainer that, of course, the indicator would do the exact same, but no, no they don't. So then let's move on to my first Arrow Academy haul. Now I was just getting into their releases, and I picked up the four film noir classics box set, as well as titles like Decalogue. Again, I had watched videos on YouTube with people showing off their Arrow Academy box sets, and the film noir box set looked gorgeous, a great hard case with the titles in their individual slim cases, a very worthy addition to my collection, so I thought. The price on sale was what I would have expected from such a box set, so fantastic, I'll add it to my ba basket. And what turns up later, but a thinner, flimsy cardboard set with two cases with the four films inside. Some cheap, poor excuse for a great set that I had seen. Again, incredibly disappointing. Or take Decalogue, for example. Now, I had seen videos showing the box set of this, and however, with Decalogue, it was made very clear that this particular version was no longer available. I was very aware that I was buying a more standard edition, which just came in the usual Amore case just like the rest of their releases. I picked it up and it was much as I expected. Now after watching this magnum opus, this absolute masterwork of cinematic genius, it got me thinking, why on earth was a box set for Decalogue limited? I became immediately interested in seeing more of Koslowski's work and looking back at the box set I saw it does include other things by him. So why this wildly limited run? I would have loved to buy this box set release, and something that is actually worthy of this astonishing cinematic experience, but all I had was a bland Amore case. Why are the box sets now going for hundreds of pounds, still sealed, mind you, on eBay? How does that benefit the manufacturer? How does that benefit the collector? So just as an, as an example, I wanted to take a look at these three box sets in particular. Um, now all three of these on sale I got for around £20, so they're all roughly the, the same cost. Um, you've got here the four film noir classics. This is the re-release from Arrow Academy. You can see it, it's, it's fairly thin, it's just the flimsy, the flimsy cardboard slip box. And you've got the four films spread across just two Amore cases. This is one of the limited edition um, uh, sets from Arrow Academy. You can see, if I put these next to each other, you can see the difference in thickness. Um, here we've got a, you've got the hard, sturdy cardboard case. You've got an increased number of Amore cases. You've got a booklet as well. Um, in the limited edition version of this, you would have the four films spread across four Blu-ray cases, um, four of the Amore cases. Um, and again, around the same cost. And then just as uh, another comparison, this again, I mean, this is a box set from Sony, obviously, but this again, about £20 here, you get the hard, sturdy cardboard slipcase. You get embossing, you've got gloss, and whether you like these or not, you get, it's like a digi book inside. Um, so information about the movie in a nice sort of, Digi book case, and there's two of them inside here, um, as you can see. And again, all three of these are around the same price. They're around, they're all around twenty pounds. And so the question remains: If these companies can make such wonderful sets, limited edition quality sets, and sell them at such reasonable prices, and still make a profit? then why is there a need for a re-release that's poorer quality? Now, of course, you could argue that limited editions help facilitate new interests in a company's releases, or that I should have just done more research before making my purchases. Or perhaps limited editions are in our hobby, they're just a fact of life and something that we have to deal with. To all of that, I would agree, except for the fact that Criterion exist. They are the biggest boutique distributor and by far the longest running, so clearly they must be doing something right. They have managed not only to survive in a world where physical media is on the decline, but I would suggest thrive and succeed over the years. So if that's the case, what is the need for these types of releases? Making super limited sets that are only available to those who pre-order and are never even open to enjoy them. The only thing that it does is encourage scalpers, which are already the bane of our collector's journey.
I hate to say it, but I've even found myself picking up things recently and then thinking, hmm, maybe I should keep this sealed. Maybe it'll appreciate in value. And I hate that that even enters my mind. You have a quick check on eBay, and even when something isn't out of stock or out of print, purely because it's a limited edition box set and one day it will be, they are already going for twice or more their price. Walkabout is a current example I'd use. I just got it directly from Second Sight recently, and this is a title still available, and you can go on eBay and see the prices they're already going for, which are way more than retail, and again, let me reiterate, these are still available at retail on Second Sight's website, or HMV, or Amazon. Now, not to call anyone out, because we're all guilty of this, but how many collectors do we see on YouTube that show off their fantastic collections, but we see so many limited edition sets that are still sealed on their shelves? These are people that really love the film, they are lovers of the distributors and their work, but even they don't open the box sets. Now think about how many of those sets are from Criterion, compared to how many are from other distributors. Of course you might see the, the odd individual release that isn't opened because a person hasn't got to it yet, but I see nowhere near the amount of Criterion box sets that are still sealed. And why? Because it doesn't matter when you buy them. New collector or old, it's irrelevant. You can't scalp them because they aren't limited. They won't appreciate in value. Out of print titles accepted of course, but let's be honest, how often does that really happen for Criterion? It means that all your Criterion titles you can enjoy as the distributor intended. No collector's guilt for opening them up, rifling through the great contents and enjoying the release. I've seen videos from other collectors where they touch on this, and the fear of missing out aspect of our film and collecting journey, but I think the root of that is in the proliferation of these limited editions. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the subject and just some of my recent thinking about the state of our hobby and my frustrations with it. Of course, overall, collecting boutique releases is an absolute joy and something that I am incredibly grateful for. Being able to go on this film journey is truly wonderful and something that I enjoy more and more as time goes on. I hope you've enjoyed hearing my thoughts, or at least found it interesting and possibly related to it in some ways. Whether you agree with me or think I'm completely wrong, feel free to leave a comment, as this is a topic that I believe is definitely worth wider discussion. Thanks for listening. See you in the next video.